Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for the Happy Space Pop Con Jamboree. This is our bonus session from such a great summer where we had a total of 16 weeks, weekends, 16 oh. presentations with some of the best voice actors, uh, some of the best uh, animators, legends of the comic book industry, authors, actors, writers, just such a great summer that's culminating now with an amazing wrap-up. Uh, this is brought to you by Eva Inc., pros and cons, celebrity booking. Uh, Renee Witterstater is going to be on with us today. You probably see her already. Uh, she'll give you some more details on how to contact some of the great talent that she represents. And as always, being produced by Fayetteville Comic Con, where if it's geek, we got it. Uh, Renee, how are you doing? Hey guys, oh good Keith, how are you doing today? Awesome, awesome. Well, I was really what we got in store. Oh wow, I was really looking forward to this event because it is the wrap up of our first series on Happy Space PopCon. And we've had just a tremendous time. And Megan's been with us here before for the Bleach panel and for the Yu-Gi-Oh panel. And Quentin is joining us today and talking about his work also. We have Quentin Flynn, Megan Hollingshead here. Um, if you guys have not checked out the merchandise on the Happy Space PopCon page yet, it is not too late. You can buy merch for any of our panels, even after the fact. We have all of their panels and all their merch available. We've also got Aliens, Invader Zim, Pokemon, Batman, Rogue. I mean, it's just like, go and check out what we have. We have um, you know, Butch Patrick from the Munsters, um, all kinds of great things for you guys to look at. So um, not just great headshots, Renee, oh, and autographs, but some great one-on-one experiences. That's right. You can order one-on-one -on -one experiences with many of your favorite actors, a five-minute chat. You can order a video message, a video, you know, a, a recorded message or a video message. There's just uh, all kinds of things. You know, you just have to go and look. And they are still available on the website. You can even buy panels that have already recorded. You can go on and purchase them and, and view them at any time at your leisure, right in your own home. Uh, we, have, we have some secrets really close to the chest that were unveiled in some of those panels yeah, yeah, about yeah. upcoming yeah. projects, about next seasons, right. about you know interactive stories from uh, production of some classic movies. Yeah, especially the um, the alien stories were really fascinating, and our Todd McFarlane panel was really interesting too. So uh, you know, a lot of great stuff. But if let me talk okay. about today. Um, Megan, our our veteran inter uh, uh, actress here, uh, volunteered to come on and interview Quentin. So she's going to be doing that today. Uh, and you know them from the That's why I have glasses today. These are my interviewer's glasses. So this is actress Megan. <gasps> this is interviewer Megan. Oh, I like it. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, if you see this guy with the hat on on your screen, I'm kind of mad at him because normally he has blue hair. And I call oh. him blue. And he has like this spiky blue hair, but he didn't wear it for me today. He had to wear the hat. I knew you were going to call me out for yeah, that too. I know, but, I know. But he's still a very a talented movie. artist. He does a lot of great anime work. Um, Chris has worked with me a lot. And today, guys, Chris is going to be doing a sketch that will represent both Quentin and Megan's characters. And during the course of this show, you, the audience, may bid on this piece. All you have to do is put in your bid in the chat in the chat section of the panel as we go along. And I'm gonna break in every now and then and update the price on the piece. And at the end of this panel, somebody's gonna walk away with a beautiful piece of original art that's representative of our guests here today. And not only that, but at the very end of the show, we're going to raffle off a free print by Chris that will also have an original sketch on it. And one of the viewers that has registered for this event, you had to register for the event to win the free print, is going to win that free print with the sketch. So um, that's, oh. and um, we're gonna cut in every now and then and see what Chris is working on and uh, try, you know see where the bid is. And in the meantime, we're gonna get started with our reporter interviewer, um, Megan Kent here, <laughs> <laughs> Janelle Clark Kent, 
Take it away, Megan. All right. I was going for more a Terry Gross thing, but I like I like Clark Kent. Okay. This is NPR. <laughs> Quentin Flynn. Yes. What is Kingdom Hearts? Because it sounds like a wildly popular breakfast cereal with puffy marshmallow hearts. Is that right? And, yes. and if, what do you have to do with that? Yes, Kingdom Hearts. It, it did begin as a uh, serial. It was mm. very exciting for a lot of folks out there. And I uh, actually ate it mm -hmm. uh, to the point of obesity. Mm -hmm. And um, they actually took me out on a stretcher uh, to a hospital. And then that wasn't good enough. So they sent me to Willy Wonka's um, squeezing room. And so they squeezed all of the Kingdom Hearts life out of me. And then they breathed oh. oxygen into me and added some plasma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then some, well, they adjusted my human heart. And uh, it was a magical experience. And um, I had a, 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 a leprechaun, as most Irish people do. And I said, why don't you create a story for fans and children that wouldn't be as scary as, as my life? And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they said, yeah, let's do that. And let's make it seem like it originated in Japan. And let's give it away to companies like Square Enix and Disney so they can make all the money. So that's exactly what they did. And um, for some years ago, it didn't come out alone. You are brilliant. So so for reals, how did you, how did you get involved with Kingdom Hearts? It's I, so wildly uh, popular. Everyone loves you. Everyone loves it. Wow. Uh, what's been great about it for you? What do you and what do you love about it? What I love, well, what I love about it is uh, the fans constantly ask me to say, I got it memorized. Um, you know, it's akin to growing up in, in the 70s watching uh, Henry Winkler as the Fonz on Happy Days. Everyone wanted him to say, hey. So whenever I'm at conventions, it's got it memorized, you know, and I only have to say those words before someone passes out in front of me. You, you have a catchphrase. I have a catchphrase. I have a few of them. Have you ever I, had a catchphrase before? Well, not, not my own per se, uh, before uh, Axel, but with Axel and with another character, Raiden from the Metal Gear series, I have multiple catchphrases. And of course, playing Spider-Man, there's my Spidey sense is tingling with a right. human torch, it's flame on. But the fans don't ask for that. They ask for Axel, uh, who's also Lee, and um, they ask for uh, Ryan, who's Jack the Ripper, to say, now it's time for Jack to let her rip. And, you know, that's, 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 that's what we do. I only have one catchphrase from Naruto, and it's, I <laughs> <laughs> You might not be surprised to know that no fan ever wants to hear that. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm 100% I'm sure. I don't know. I got well, a few Said, we have a question from the audience, which is, could you do your catchphrase from Naruto? Naruto? Naruto. Or Naruto. Do you have a catchphrase? Who, me or Quentin? You. Oh, <laughs> oh your fans are so brilliant. Um, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Could you, could you do it again just for me? Just for you. I, um, I liked it the, uh, better, better the way you did before. Do you, <laughs> you have a Funko Pop from Naruto? Uh, not from Naruto, do you? No, that's what I really want. Catchphrase, smetch phrase. Yeah, pop. right? Let's get All some right. Funko Pops. All right. Uh, guys, one Speaking of Naruto. What? Yeah, please. Check in with Chris. Chris, can you explain to us what you're working on right now? Uh, yeah, so... When um, when you first asked about the the panel with with our two uh, guests, it was uh, my idea of the two of them dressed as their characters they voice uh, in cosplay, and what? so we've got Megan here dressed as Nurse Joy, okay, yeah, and she is holding a nice syringe here to administer a shot. Quentin at the bottom there dresses Cone. It's not looking too happy uh, about getting a shot right now. 
and so I kind of tried to capture his expressions, was running away and a little bit of new. So he's uh he's not he's not too happy about getting a shot. He wanted a cosplay only. Wow, that's I don't cool. want to get a shot. So guys, <laughs> just so you know, a sketch like this from Chris is normally three hundred and fifty dollars. But guys, start putting in your bids for this now. Um, you know, we'd like to start the bidding at 150. So if anybody out there wants to start making your bids, you can see how awesome this is going to be. You can have an original piece of art from a really well-known anime artist in your home in a, you know, a matter of days with our two guests featured here in this piece. So um, it's looking great, Chris. We'll check back with you in a little while. Hey, Chris, if I could ask you a question from know our, our fans of the happy space popcom broadcast some of the art we've done what uh, type of markers are do you use when you are uh, going from your pencils to your inks oh yeah uh so um i kind of rely on uh haley's advice for that but she she usually just she gets me these microns here um and i go all the way down to a zero zero five for the finer yeah. lines i try not to go above anything than a zero three to do the lines like I'm doing now. And uh, and then when I fill in the rest of the inks, good old Sharpie, you just can't beat these. Wow. You get the uh, regular point, the fine point, and then for your major areas that need it, just get one of these fatties right here. That'll do it. That's about it. I don't use anything more than these three sets of markers. And also, guys, uh, anybody that's listening out there that wants your portfolio reviewed, I would like a private art class with Chris that is available on Happy Space PopCon as well under the Jamboree merch section. So. And if you work for either Micron or Sharpie, sponsorships available for Happy Space PopCon. All right, let's, let's uh, <laughs> we'll check back in. We'll check back in with you in a minute, Chris, in a few minutes. Keep working. <laughs> Get back to old monkey. <laughs> Megan, Megan, take it away. I, well, I just have to say that is so cool and I want it. <laughs> um, it's cool. Uh, All right, Megan's the one to beat, guys. <laughs> no, my phone is off and uh, I gotta uh, I gotta find a way to send spoke signals to my husband to be like vid on the bid on it get on i'll get on facebook and start bidding now honey if you're watching yeah let's start the bid you you guys um so speaking of naruto quentin, quentin yeah play, oh yes mm. now, i play an actual character in naruto and i believe you play an udon topping is that correct and one of our friends suggested we talk to each other in character now clearly I'm gonna to have to carry the load here since you play food. Um, since I what? Since I what? Since you play food. Um, well, sure. I, you said on toppy. I'm usually on toppy. You you play an udon topping. Is that correct? Oh, topping. Yes. Right. Yes, I do. Uh, uh, well, no. Uh, yes. No. Uh, what? Um, well, is this Bleach or Naruto? You're speaking of now. Oh, wait. Did I get it wrong? Uh, no, n n Naruto? Or are you speaking of Bleach? I thought it was Naruto, where you play an udon topping. Well, I play, no, actually, I play um, Iruka Sensei, who takes Naruto. Uh, a new Naruto is an udon topping. Naruto's an udon topping? Yeah. It's um, a, little, a little white, round, with pink, uh, and it goes on top of the uh, ramen, correct? For you, having, you should interview me. I, I sure. So if I took you out, would, for, for, um, I took you out, Megan, uh, for some ramen. Would you prefer Naruto on <laughs> ramen or on your lap? Well, <laughs> <laughs> definitely on the ramen. Thank you. So, okay. uh, so uh, what is your? Who are you? You're Aruka, yeah. I'm Aruka Sensei. I am Naruto's so, mentor. So, what does Aruka mean? Any idea? Means I love you, right? Right. Yeah, I Aruka. I love you. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> we've never. I don't think I've ever had any scenes with you. I'm Shizune, by the way. I, I, I'm not yet. Yeah, we're having it now. Yeah. Well, exactly. They should. Uh, they should be. Yes. Well. They should be making us. Well, it is happening. Yes. By by Chris. 
Chris is making rock and roll dreams come true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so Quentin Flynn, Kingdom Hearts. Yes. What is the business about sea salt ice cream and a yes. Oh uh, well, um, the uh, as as the fans know, Axel and Roxas and Shion love to hang out at the uh, clock tower and eat sea salt ice cream. It's uh, a favorite of theirs. It's a favorite of the fans. Uh, it's something I actually put out on Twitter a uh, recipe for quite a while ago. You and, did. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'd love to, to lay claim to having created it, <clears throat> but uh, indeed I uh, <clears throat> procured it from elsewhere. I, let's just say I borrowed it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's pretty delicious and sea salt ice cream is fun. And that, that's something they, they love to enjoy together. And it came out with the, the video game series and then fans, they went nuts for it. And so, you know, a lot of them will come up to me with and sea salt ice cream candy. Uh, no one has yet to bring me sea salt ice cream because it's always too hot. Uh, but it's a uh, pretty delish. Um, is that a Japanese dish? Well, I, 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 it's a good question as to where it was originated. I, I think it's possible. Um, it's big in Japan. Because in, in Pokemon, they at least the first season. I don't know if they're still doing this, but they um, would change all the Japanese dishes to Americanized dishes. So um, the characters would clearly be eating uh, rice balls, but we would call them donuts and stuff like that. I like donuts. I, I wouldn't be fond of rice balls. Oh, rice balls are delicious. Are they? I mean, they're no donuts, but. No, certainly. What is? Oh, well, yeah. donuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the other show we did together, but not together, because we're never to in this. Together apart. Together apart yeah. uh, was Bleach, and the yes. scenes we did together were among my favorites because we got to do the previews. Yes. How fun were the previews? Previews were always fun. We didn't have to match Flap, and for those of you who don't know, Flap is when the characters move their mouths. Um, so as I'm talking, the characters move. I can't even do it because the characters would often move their mouths in different ways from the way that we would normally talk, but it's our job to match what they're doing. Um, but in the previews, we would just be talking over scenes. Yeah. And move, I can't Even move. more silly, I think, you can tell me if I'm wrong, than Cone was normally. Yeah, they were pretty ridiculous. I will say that I had to, um, I had to repeatedly say, uh, Illustrated guy, the Soul Reapers. Golden. Um, it wasn't good. <laughs> enough to do it just once it, it had to be redone several episodes in, it seemed like into the hundreds why, why because there were nanoseconds of difference that meant nothing to me but everything to the producers right yes again rice balls over donuts i said donuts they said rice balls i got screwed right. um right. we got a question here it looks like from david to everyone was, was I happy to see the tri trio reunited in Kingdom Hearts 3? Oh. Um, uh, it says Dawn. And the trio is what we were talking about, Megan, but uh, on the, the clock tower of Shion and Roxas and Axel. And, uh, you know, fans had, were in a lot of pain that they hadn't been together. So it was lovely to see them reunited. And there's a whole backstory to Axel and Lee and which one is young, and which one's a somebody, and which one's a nobody, but we can't get into that here. It would be a, a three-hour rabbit hole, yeah. Now, uh, in our line of work, we often work alone. Are you, um, are you connected with any of the cast? Do you? Do I'm you... connected with an actress by the name of Megan's, Megan Hollingshead. She's fantastic. Megan's Hollinghead. Is... I was gonna say Megan's Hollinghead. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah, yeah. De definitely English. Megan's hauling head will roll. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, it's tough. Like we met at a convention, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there's In Japan. Not, there's not exactly. There's not much time to hang out. There is not, and even less so today. Um, but you know, thanks to Renee, she brought us all together, and here we are. Uh -huh. yeah. Otherwise, I'd be curled up in a fetal position, crying my eyes out. So, 
Oh, Renee, you already cool. stayed here. We're yes, glad you're are. here. We're glad you're here. <laughs> So in addition to uh, you guys who are awesomely asking questions online, uh, I asked for people to ask questions on the Instagram. Yes. Uh, Megan, let's take one break. Let's see what Chris is doing right now. I do have an update. Um, we have our starting bid at 150 right now. 150 has been met. So guys, if you're, if you're interested Metters. in getting in on this piece, um, it's only at 150 right now, so go ahead and get your bids in. This is going to be a beautiful piece. Chris, tell us what you're doing right now. Yep, yeah, so uh, I'm finishing up. Uh, already got the top of her head here. I'm going down towards the hands and the shot now. I'm going to work my way down, and I'm actually going to come across this way. And then I'm going to start working on Quentin over here, and then I'll finish up the two of them down towards the bottom. Already got the lovely Megan up here. Cosplaying our nurse Joy, the top. Hello, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I tried that once at the hospital, and I, I think they, uh, it didn't go over well. Didn't go over well. Uh, they, they sent you back to the water tower. Yeah, no, no sense of humor in there. <laughs> no, not known for their sense of humor. No. Well, thank you, Chris. We'll check back with you in a little bit. All right. Uh, uh, Honest.Amen. Uh, did you see numerous news and videos about FF7 supporters and fans' continuous demand uh, on Square Enix to bring you and Voice Originals back to their respective roles in the updated version? So do you know you are very much wanted back? I am a wanted man. You are a wanted man. We all knew yes, that. We knew that. Um, I'm a wanted man. I did not see that, but I saw the question and uh, I'm thrilled. I'm honored. I'm fascinated. I'm intrigued. I would love to come back if they have the power. Make Quentin, it so. Quentin Flynn, what is FF7? That, that means Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII was a video game. And it was also uh, a film called Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, in mm -hmm. which uh, I, uh, I was a voice star as yeah. Reno. And uh, there were many others as well. And it was wildly famous, and it still is. And with the Final Fantasy VII remake, um, different producers, different cast, and the fans were outraged, and rightfully so. So wait, so you were in the game and the movie? Correct. Uh, were you in uh, other games in the whole series? I was. And I also played another character named I Isaru, or Isaru, depending on how you pronounce it. Right. And, uh, but Reno, yes, in, in a few games. So did you have any idea when, when you were recording that it was going to become the giant thing that Final Fantasy is? Not a clue. If I did, I would have invested. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with their money. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, and what was that experience like? Um, wow. Crazy. Nuts. Good. I, you, me, we. Yeah, fantastic. I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was like. <laughs> All right, then. So, yeah. so Megan, uh, Megan, I apologized earlier before you got on that did not wear the cheetah pants, I apologize. And oh, Quentin oh. apparently is wearing cheetah pants. I, I did not either. So we, we both owe each other cheetah pants, but I am wearing cheetah Crocs. There you wow. Go. You know you could get cheetah Crocs? Yeah. These are unfortunately not available on the Happy Space PopCon website. No. Uh, not yet. <laughs> not, not, yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> What's uh, it? What, what, what does one do with a gal like you? Cheetah Crocs. Cheetah Crocs. That's it. Wow. Uh, we have a question on the chat. Are you excited to be back in the WOW? This is World of Warcraft. Warcraft of the world? The World of Warcraft. You had it right the first time, right? Yep. Uh, I'm excited. RMI. Am I excited to be back in the next World of Warcraft expansion, Shadowlands, Evan? Evan, I am uh, I am R excited. I'm very excited. Are you? 
Oh, oh, so he's not here. Uh, have you been in World of Warcraft before? Oh yes, for many years I play a character named Prince Kaelfoss. Prince Kaelfoss Sunstrider, of course. Oh, he's so charming. Very charming. Take off your Crocs for me, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, of course you will. How? I am the leader of the Crocs, the free world of Crocs. Chris, that one got you? <laughs> oh, that was I've been trying so hard to not, like, I'm, oh. I was spit on the artwork. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> on the artwork. No, it's good, it's good. People pay more for oh, it. Oh, that one did get me. Oh, yeah, wow. they pay more for it, Megan, you're right. Yeah. So uh, talk about what that's like for people who don't know what it's like to work on a game and be able to come back again and again and reprise your role. <clears throat> Well, it's it's pretty exciting. <laughs> fun, fun. Expand. Oh, did you want me to expand upon that? Let's see. Um, no. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful when you you're asked back, uh, but because we work in in studio in an isolatory fashion, uh, which is that a word? Isolated fashion, isolatory. It is now. Um, I'll add it to uh, Rich Hall's book of Sniglets. Um, you definitely um, are, it's an honor. And, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. It, but un unlike this, unlike interacting and hearing people laugh and chat or being on stage, it's, um, the only thing missing is the reaction from the fans. Um, but it's online somewhere out there. Somewhere out there, Megan's wearing Crocs. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just going to say for me, yeah, it's. Tell me. It's, uh, and I've said this before, like, well, I'm, I'm bursting the bubble of how uh, awesome, how, how this business is not a business, but it's, it's a business. And that's you, profound. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I, did I mention it's 111 degrees in LA? Yeah. So <laughs> and I are both like, yes. we're fried. We're literally fried. But anyway, um, to do a game, and then when they say there's more, it's just like, oh, oh, hooray. Oh, thank you. You know, Amen. and to keep going is just um, it's not only a luxury in terms of the work itself and in terms of like, yay, I get to interact more with fans because you're you're in a game that's popular and it's it's super cool and you get to reprise a character. But it's, you know, it's work and hooray. We need work. We need work. We need work. Yeah. And I will say I can honestly say I did. Well, no, I can't say it. I may have done work as Prince Kalefoss this year already several times. You may have. I may have. Unconfirmed reports. Sources say. Unconfirmed. That's the word on the street. That's a scuttlebutt. That's a, scuttlebutt. That's a skinny. Yeah. Scuttlebutt. What's a skinny? What's the word on the street about the scuttlebutt? Uh, let me tell you something. It's wonderful. I uh, I was reading the paper from my friend Friday. Well, see, my friend Friday has his girl Megan working. And then they told us about this World of Warcraft thing. Wow, they called it. And I said, it's fantastic, isn't it? They're going to be bringing all kinds of people back. Well, that's wonderful. More jobs for people. More jobs. Greater economy. Out of this Wuhan flu thing. Fantastic. Fantastic, guys. Back to you, Megan. Back to me. Uh, Badlands says, you are the best. I would pay to watch you. Well, let's leave it at that. Yes. Uh, Sydney, 0210, says, what have you enjoyed and or not enjoyed throughout your career? Oh, can you talk about what you have not enjoyed in your career? We could spend an hour on that. An <laughs> 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 <Yeah>, hour? <laughs> have an hour, but eh. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, I don't know. One of the benefits is, uh, you know, is... is looking down when I'm on camera at a, a phone that lit up in front of me. No, uh, this, meeting new people, uh, being connected, as we did in Japan, of all places. And here we are working together uh, in the U.S. virtually. Um, it's fantastic. It's the only thing that got me out of bed today, to be quite honest. And um, into this great blazer that looks pretty fine, I would say. You know, I mean, it's it's like Crocs, but it's sassy. No, you're right. It's uh, Circa 66 uh, Piccadilly. Yes. 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 Um, 
but uh, gosh, there's so much about the business I like. I like when we're acting. I like when we're playing together. I like when we're creating, when we're laughing, when we're improvising, when we're on tour together. Um, the downside, of course, is because it's a freelance position. Um, we don't know when we're going to work next. And unless we're creating something, we're kind of at the behest of the creators and the whim of the gods. Uh, and the downside would be that which I just said. Um, the money flow is inconsistent. So it, it, the life of an artist is a tough one. I think I can speak for all artists when I say that. Uh, and the ghost mm. of John Gaylewood would agree. Say, yes, it's wonderful. Uh, do you want me to uh, wash your dick for you, sir? <laughs> Okay, for anybody, and there's probably a lot of you who are too young to have seen Arthur, that was a Yes, by please. No good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Keith. <laughs> what did Keith say? What did he say? What did you say, Keith? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, Megan, there's my temperature. Oh, 75? Stop it. I'm in Florida in a thunderstorm, but. Oh, oh I don't would, jinx it. Yeah. I would pay for rain. Can you yeah, guys it, believe that it was almost a year ago that we were in Okinawa together? Are you right? October yeah. uh, t uh, 10th. Well, my birthday is October 10th, and I know we were there. Oh, because... my best friend's birthday is October 10th. Michael Golden, the artist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, gosh, it's been almost a year. I know, and that was amazing, wasn't it? Was it fun? Yeah, we really. Had time. Yeah, I remember uh, Olivia Hack and I got there the day before. Some of you, not all of you, and she said, "Let's go out for lunch on your birthday," which we did to the American Village. Yeah. Did you go shopping there at all? Oh, I did. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Um, and then we that night we went to see a movie on the base, and it was Joker. Which is a happy sunshine movie, of course. Oh yeah, happy, happy, joy, joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and what was interesting, we didn't know this because we were in the very front row. We were in a theater. It was a giant theater, and the uh, screen was to the back behind the st an actual stage. So oh. set back, way back. That's why we were in the front row. And there were commercials before the movie, which was kind of unusual. And then uh, the music for the uh, was it the Pledge or the Star Spangled Banner? No, the Star Spangled Banner uh, started. And we didn't know, uh, you, of course, you're supposed to stand just as, uh, as if you were at any event. Oh. And so someone behind us, it was, it was all military, except us, we were the commoners. And they said, stand. Oh. And I was like, what? And we looked around and everyone's standing behind and we stood and we, it was wild. It was glorious. Oh, wow. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah, and uh, one drawback, uh, I found to working in the voiceover business is working alone so often. I don't know about you, but I got into yes. acting because I love being around people. Yes. Like it's, it's such a, it, it's such a community, especially when you do theater, like you're, people fall in love in theater all the time. You have like performance romances. I mean, it's just, you're so close to people. Um, yeah. It's, it's just unbelievable. You have a little family for the duration of time you're in a show. Uh, and Rumor has it, Megan, that you have a theater family in the house in which you stay right now. Is that true? <laughs> it's just a show. I have a husband. It is. And I keep waiting for the show to end. No. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, he's very entertaining. So I have a feeling that this is a show. Yeah. This show has legs. It's really, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, so Did you I'm, do a lot of theater in New York? Did you do a lot of theater here in LA? Both? I don't do, the, I haven't done theater in LA. Um, I did do theater in New York and I loved it, but I couldn't make it work as a living. I did mm. a lot of free theater in New York and I, uh, I got exhausted. I got exhausted from having a day job and working, doing theater at night. Is, is it inappropriate of me to ask or indelicate to ask what your day job was? I, I loved my day job. I worked at New York City Opera in their first in their payroll department and then in their press department. So wow. um, that's fantastic. It was hard work, but um, but I got to see free opera and uh, we shared a Ooh. building with New York City Ballet, so I got to see free ballet. 
So there's definitely a joke there for when was your work day over? Ah. It was not. There was no. Was when you worked over. for the opera, your work day would be over when? Oh, yeah. When the hot lady sang. Ba -da -ba -ba. Or as we said, because, you know, opera is very tragic. The, um, one of our crew guys would, would always be like, is she dead yet? Uh, <laughs> most operas end with the heroine dying. There used to be a, an opera singer ghost at the end of the Haunted Mansion ride in Disney, but for some reason they oh. have removed her. You know, the, the fat lady singing at the end of the ride is no longer there. So. Oh. I don't know. There's some conspiracy about that. <laughs> hey, guys, while I have your um, attention, the bid is now $200 on our sketch by Chris from one of our <laughs> online viewers. Now, guys, if this gets up to $250, not only will you get the line art, but Chris will do the piece in color. So will. Megan, yes, so get your will. husband online to bid. <laughs> some color. Tell us what you're doing, Chris. Oh, there's there's Quentin coming through. That's yeah, me. So, uh, Haley, what are these called? The onesies, but Japan, they call them. Kigu. That's a kigu. So Quentin's wearing a kigu, of, of, uh, and it's like, it's tomato, tomato, but it's, is it cone or is it con? It's okay. cone. Cone is my name. <laughs> Got it. So you're wearing a cone kigu. Damn right. Not gonna lie, it's pretty comfy. I'm, I'm looking up her skirt. <laughs> yeah, look I got a little, I'm getting a shot. There's like a little bit of, a little bit of cartoony running smoke there at the bottom. Yeah, baby. That. Yeah. I no dream shot. of Jeannie with light brown hair, holding a hypodermic needle in her hand. I wonder if there really is a cone kidu in Japan. There must oh, be. There's be. There would have to be. If not, someone's going to make one now. All right, make I your have... holiday better with a cone kidu. More. <laughs> 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 your vet voice was great. I love that. Fantastic. <laughs> well, happy you know, like the, you know, like the Jungle Cruise. I'm like on a Disney kick. Oh, <laughs> I love the Jungle Cruise. Um, <laughs> okay, Megan, take it away again. Gwendolyn, you've played a number of legacy characters Spider Man, The yes. Human Torch, Johnny oh. Ball, Venom, Dead, yes. Elmer Fudd. Uh, you replaced Nathan Lane as Timon and Pumbaa. Uh, Timon. Timon, sorry. Yeah. And you played Snowball. 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 <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> How long uh, are you doing this? Or was this one year? There's a lot of voices in this head. Are <laughs> these, were these voice matches or were these, um, some of them well, were voice matches. Some yeah. of them were your own takes on the characters? Uh, Nathan Lane, who originated the role of Timon in the animated feature for Disney, The Lion King, uh, started the animated series with Ernie Sabella, who played Pumbaa. And he went on to do The Birdcage with Robin Williams and Gene Hackman and Hank Azaria. And he needed to be replaced. So they uh, scouted the talent of 100 actors and they whittled it down to 25, to eight, to three, to me. And ah. suddenly in 1994, I think, you heard me saying on your television set, Akuna Machata, what a wonderful phrase. <laughs> and so I was doing Nathan Lane all my days. I got to be a cynical <laughs> prick and get paid cynical prick money. Ah. Um, so that was an early uh, fun career or a career mark, water, high water mark for me in my young younger days. Um, and then yes, I played the Human Torch uh, in season two, where uh, I was replacing Brian Austin Green, not because they want he was doing a movie called The Birdcage, but because they wanted a different Human Torch, and they wanted me. So uh -huh. in that case, I got to be one of the Fantastic Four, and I'd say flame on. Oh. And that's your, you know, classic Marvel Comics catchphrase. And that year I was fortunate enough to meet Stan Lee, who, what? yeah, he came to our studio. They gave us merch. I got a Fantastic Four tie, an animated cell. And then I was smart enough to say, Stan, will you sign my, my script? 
and he wrote for any Marvel fan will know the way Stan wrote. He he put down to the titanically yeah, talented to Quentin Flynn. <sighs> and I went, you're the man. And he said, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so that's that was, amazing. That, that's, that's some of the best. early legacy characters. Uh, I've done uh, Spider-Man, yes, who is my all-time favorite as a child. Uh, I got to play him in Marvel's Ultimate Alliance. And I will tell you on hot, sticky summer days in Ohio, I would go between the door jam and my bottoms of my feet that were very tacky from the heat. I would put my back against the door jam and my hands against the, the little rails there and try to climb up to the ceiling. And, and I did. And so I actually believed I was Spider-Man. <gasps> Fantastic. Look at that. Look at that. From climbing up a sticky door jam to actually voicing Spider-Man. That's right. I mean, how crazy is life? I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's how many, how many people ask us, like, how do you get into the business? And so, you know, for everyone who has a passion for this and a love and a dream, it happens. Dream alive. Yeah. Yeah, it does happen. Yeah. Great things have happened. So yeah, um, gosh, some of the other characters I think you asked about, Deadpool uh, became po popular after the first feature film with Ryan Reynolds into the second. And um, Jared Winkler has a show. Uh, his production company is called Winky Dink, and he does a series called Cartoon Hookups. And uh, it's on online on YouTube. You can see it for free. And you can see me as Deadpool. Uh, I've voiced numerous episodes, and it's, uh, I guess, uh, it's adult language and content, you know, not, not frightfully so, but very funny and kind of naughty. And well, so, that's the Deadpool thing. It is. is. That that's my thing, too. So are you voice matching Ryan Reynolds, or are you doing your own thing? It's, it's a combination of me and Ryan Reynolds. I, I'm kind of... Uh, taking on his persona. And so you'll hear a bit of Ryan Reynolds in there. And then of course, you'll hear me. Well, cause it's me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a bit of a Ryan Reynolds take off. Yeah. Kind of smart, smart alky, you know, quick. Megan, I like your top. I'd like it better if it was balled up in a corner of my bedroom. That, right. that kind of thing. So now I get what you're saying about sort of adult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you mentioned like uh, replacing someone in the Human Torch. Oh, and sorry, that was the Fantastic Four. Yes, I oh. I played Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Yeah. Uh, so that happens in our business, right? Um, sorry. That happens in our business. We get replaced. We replace people. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Well, interesting. Um, you know, I, uh, different producers brought me in for that. So I kind of replaced Brian Austin Green, but I kind of didn't. Uh, I actually, I guess I did. And he went on to do other things. I'm sure he got over it. But yeah. um, I, I was doing the film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and playing Casey Jones. Uh -huh. Now, strangely enough, I was replaced by Chris Evans. And Chris Evans also played the Human Torch in the live action film, The Fantastic Four. So he's stalking me is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, what a, he's a freak. I don't know what his problem is. You know, then he had to go on to become Captain America because he thought he had to be a captain at fucking everything. And it turns out that David Hayter was Captain America in an animated series episode of Spider-Man's Ultimate Wars in which I was the Human Torch again. So it's, again, I have concrete evidence that Chris Evans is stalking me and, and he won't even speak about it in public. He's insane. <laughs> Clearly. You're us. We're, we're calling him out. You're calling him out right now. I am calling him out right now. He's not a funny man. He was funny in the head. Uh, he's too serious uh, and he's just too creepy. Evans, okay. get over it. <laughs> It's when he did his own stunts in Scott Pilgrim and he ground that rail and he fell and crashed. I think that's where it all started. See, Keith uh, knows. That was a good reference. Oh. Also, of uh, Quentin Flynn. 
All right, guys, let's check in on our sketch real quick. Let's see what Chris is doing here. Chris, let's see the sketch. Okay. It's getting there. It's got uh, finishing up the final touches on that Kigu. Right now, he's, he's yeah. Oh, a little exclamation marks there. Yeah. Adorable. And I got to finish the rest of the legs here. Yeah. So guys, we are up to 200 on our bid for this sketch, this 11 by 17 sketch with two characters. And like I said, if we do get the bid up to 250, then Chris will provide the piece in color to whoever wins the, the bid. And I so haven't found the Khan Kigu yet, but I did find a Khan hoodie blanket, like uh, a snuggie. Wow. Just so yeah. Yeah. Gonna be a, now there's gonna be a Khan Kigu that someone's gonna see this and it's probably it's already being made right now. It, it's cone, just so you know. Cone, I'm sorry. That's okay. Cone. I'm sorry. I was listening to Chris. Damn it. That's all right. I don't think. <laughs> oh, don't blame it on me. Wait, I blame it all on you as usual. Chris <laughs> got thrown under the bus. Wait, would cone actually say that's okay? No, cone would say, cone, oh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me hold on. No, that's not okay. My name is cone. Take responsibility. <laughs> Um, did you see the we've got a question from Liz who said, what's each of your favorite characters you've done? The one that's paying me the most. The one that's pained you the most? No. Well, that that, that too. Uh, <laughs> that would be most of them. Uh, no, the one that's paying me the most. I, I kid. Uh, I'm happy whenever I'm working and whatever character that happens to be. I don't know if there's one that makes me more happier than the others. How about you, Megan? I like the over the top ones. I like being just insane. So what does that mean? Um, that uh, you're insane? That I'm insane, yeah. No. I liked, uh, I really liked my Valentine from Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, you could give us a little bit? Fashion challenged. Uh, the only reason I duel is for the prize money. Uh, oh, I love her. Right? Right. She's yes, very nice, But in the end, she's very good to her friends. Very loyal. Mm. Respect. Uh, yeah, I think my might, might be my favorite. Although there's ones that surprise me. And, and I agree with you. Whichever one I'm working on right now, I go, ooh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess Liz, if we could talk to her, we would say which characters that we do are your favorites. Yeah, but she's yeah. not here. We will respond to her and find that for you. There you go. And um, Quentin, what was your first role? Uh, uh, animation, video game. Uh, uh, animation. Animation. I believe. I I, I know what it was. I, I guessed it on Aladdin and the Disney animated series, and I played Prince Khalid. What? That's yes. so fancy. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, that's awesome. What and did I also, you sound like? Can you do that voice? I think Prince Khalid sounds like this, you know. It's wonderful to be here with Chris and Keith, Renee and Megan. Um, you know, make me look good. Because if you don't make me look good, you'll make me look bad, and then bad things happen to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, Quentin, just as a as a funny, because you know how I like things to connect and the circularity of loss, like going to Chris Evans and this and then that. Uh, when Chris Coates was uh, logging in, he was complaining about his fat thumbs. And I said that those are good if you're a professional thumb wrestler. And I just mm -hmm. ran across that you were part of something called the World Thumb Wrestling Federation in 2017. That is, is that cool. Show. Cool. It was a it was That's a motion it was a motion picture uh, called the World Thumb Wrestling Federation. I played a character by the name of uh, Nielsen Ilverkarten, 
you know, and he comes from a very small island, this Nielsen, you know, he's very excited to be in America. Yeah, go America. It's so good to be here. I want to do drawings like Chris and speak over microphone like Keith. Give me a mohawk now. <laughs> Always, if I could wear the schmuck like Rene and also be an artist and then put on glasses like fancy lady Megan who would make talk like her, I'd be so cool. <laughs> How have I not seen this movie? Well, you and a lot of other folks. Uh, <laughs> they asked me to do it, and um, they wanted me to give some creative input, so I created the name of Nielsen Overgarten. And I wanted him to be this unusual, nondescript European character whose first name was that of Nielsen. I took from the late Harry Nielsen, who was a great songwriter. And I don't know where I came oh, up yeah. with Overgarten. I don't know, but... Uh, I he was umlaut in his name and um, very exciting. So much was left on the cutting room floor because the producers were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know the comic genius they had on their hands. Mm. Mm. But yeah, that was fun. It was a fun movie. Oh, it uh, sounds. De De uh, let's see, she was in uh, Mad TV. Uh, Deborah, help me. Deborah Wilson was also in it. Wow. Um, briefly and so we uh, worked one day on that together she's a love and she's a quick thinker and uh two other wonderful cast members so yeah you got it chris i mean keith chris and keith fat thumbs and uh overseer of thumbs deborah's character was apparently jerry mcflem her character's name was jerry mcflem the, oh that was deborah's yes yes <laughs> what are some of the other um live action or theater experiences that stand out for you? Uh, well, I did a theater run of a show called All About Walken. And it was all about Christopher Walken. Oh, come on. And, and they were motion picture scenes that were done in a theater setting. So every single one of us were looking at our lines. We were not looking. We were doing scenes as Christopher Walken. And so... <laughs> you'd have the cabbie from Taxi Driver being Christopher Walken, passenger Christopher Walken. Everyone was walking. That's why it was all about walking. Oh that, was, that was fun. Um, what else? Uh, gosh, I did a show called Both. That was a Beatles nativity. And uh, we incorporated all the Beatles music. And wow. uh, I, I played a pastor. Uh, I based him on Father Mackenzie. Um, and you know, they, and they wanted me to do a proper London accent, but I said no, not out loud, but in my head I said no. And I stuck with a Liverpoolian accent like Paul McCartney, you know, it's great stuff. So we're glad that you came here to the show. Oh. Um, it's about the birth of baby Jesus, you know, nativity, Beatles music, both. <laughs> so that's something. How did you how did you develop your repertoire of uh, accents, voices, characters? Is this something you did like as a kid? You always had a, a facility with it, or did you hone this in school? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All of the above. I did. I I remember doing impressions as young as the age of eight. Uh, oh, Do you remember? Yeah, well, it was the 70s, so I was doing impressions of Impressionists' impressions. Ah. Uh, that would have been uh, Rich Little at the time doing Richard Nixon uh, or doing uh, the late, great Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. So we're, uh, we're, we're happy to have you here. Uh, Don Nichols was on the show last night. He broke my cigarette box. And uh, up next, we're going to have Megan Hollingshead. Uh, don't ask me about her last name unless you see me after the show, after I come out of my dressing room. Oh, oh wow. my God. Hey, oh. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, started with him at eight and, and, you know, and then other classics like John Wayne and whoever they were doing, we would do. Uh, John Biner, Fred Travelina, Frank Gorshin were all influences. And then the Saturday Night Live cast from 75 on. Right. Um, Gene Wilder. Oh. Uh, Gene Wilder, very exciting, you know. We're doing a show. 
Oh my God, someone take me out of this recording studio, the monster, help me, mommy. I want my blue blankie. Oh. Oh, one of my favorites. Uh, <laughs> so you know this before you decided to be an actor or did you always know? I don't, well, it's just all, what I always did. I started drawing as a child. So I was in the fine arts until eighth grade. A couple of teachers bummed me out. So I moved into the performing arts as a freshman in high school. Loved it so much uh, that as it carried on and I, I, I did more and more shows, I got a rock band, and just couldn't get enough of performing. Um, I knew I wanted to be in entertainment. I didn't want to focus just on one area. I wanted to do them all, act, dance, sing, you know, kind of like a, if I could do Gene Wilder meets the Beatles meets Jerry Lewis, and that's kind of what my career has become. Yeah. Have you ever done a stage show? Uh, you mean a one-man show? Yeah. No, but I should. You should. You really I've, should. I've been told many times to do it. I just can't sit down and wrap my head around it. I, I need to work with someone to collaborate, and then I would happily do it. Wow. Happily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so how did how did you get into voice acting? What was, what was um, that? Or what was well, the, the, my first foray into it was taking voiceover commercial workshops back in um, Beechwood, Ohio, which was outside of Cleveland, my birthplace. And it was uh, the summer of my senior year of university, uh, Kent State University. And that gave me a taste of what one could do with one's voice. Uh, and this was more of a commercial workshop. But 10 months after I graduated, I moved to Los Angeles, California, and uh, started kind of sniffing around, and I saw a voiceover workshop for character. Oh, that was my Norma Desmond face. <laughs> Both I gonna... Megan and I are giving a Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask if you had work. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. He planted the seed. Yeah. This is what we don't get to do in voiceover enough of. Right? Mm. Not nearly enough close-ups. Mm, yes, darling. Mm. But to carry on, uh, Bob Bergen taught me my first animated character development workshop. And uh, he, he's the voice of, eh, 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 the voice of eh, Porky Pig. And he uh, really pushed me and suggested that I get into this voiceover thing. My then girlfriend, and I had a, a long chat about a year after the class and I was doing sketch comedy, improv, a band, working at a music store, uh, doing some extra work. And she said, you know, you've got your hands in so many pies, your fingers in so many pies, why don't you just pick one, nail it, hopefully accelerate, and then you can branch out later. So that's what I did and I focused on voiceover as a career, um, not knowing it was going to blow up into what blew up into not knowing that many years later like today there would be fans around the world who would be wildly interested in what we do yeah it just that was not a thing back then and yeah. I, I didn't even think of it as such i i wanted to do like yourself a stage um, tv film of which i've done bits and bobs of but became known for this and I just still don't understand it. <laughs> For me, I thought that I would get voiceover, uh, I would do voiceover, and then I would move on with my uh, stage, film, whatever. Yes. Um, but it is consuming. Yes. If you do it, you do it. And yes. But, and I'm happy to do it. I don't know about you. I'm happy to do it, but I am oftentimes resistant as well uh, because of the business part, not because of the playing. You know, as we, all of us artists can probably agree and attest to uh, that, well, we weren't born in a test tube. Someone else should be doing the business for us, God damn it. Right, right. We do have to be, some of us have managers and agents and this and that, but we really have to be our own managers and agents within that structure. We do. Nobody is going to wake up and do all our work for us. Yeah, but they should. I, in fact, <laughs> uh, keep praying for a benevolent giant to carry me around 
<laughs> from one room to the other. And then when I ask it, or he or she, to then take me somewhere else. And, and also do my laundry, and all the cooking and cleaning, my bills, because I'm not good with that. I, I'm terrible with paperwork. I, I, I'm just a, a mess. I haven't filed my taxes. Don't tell anyone. Shh. <laughs> no, no, it's only no, been five no. years. Just Facebook. Oh my oh, goodness. I mean, I don't, I don't have Wesley Snipes money, so. <laughs> Wesley again, Snipes either. doesn't have Wesley Snipes money. You, you beat, you beat me to the punch. <laughs> oh my God! Look at a tush. <laughs> Chris, how's it going? All the lines are inked. Now I'm just kind of having fun, messing around with some more shades. I'm, I'm ready to do some color. I want to do some color. So okay. if, everybody, some if everybody on our Facebook feed or on the live feed is watching, the current bid for this piece of art by the great Chris Coates is at $200, Renee? Yes, at $200. Well, undervalue people. If we if can get him up to $250, he'll do it in color, folks. So if yeah, you're interested it, in bidding, either get onto the uh, Happy Space Popcorn Jamboree Facebook feed that is linked on the web page and uh, let it know there. Or if you need to contact me directly, I'll pass that on to Renee. Uh, but this is an absolute amazing piece. It's brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. And um, yeah, currently way undervalued. Um, also, Chris, you may not know this, but Cone, who of course is... Uh, well, is he finds the hypodermic needle repellent, but he finds the but wonderful. <laughs> but, 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 see the plant words? Yeah, see, yeah, that's it. it. No, he, he was on her butt. She is nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Hey, Chris, real quick, why don't you show um, the sketches you were doing of Megan and Quentin? Yeah. Oh yeah. Really yeah. Nice. So I really love the jacket that uh, Megan was wearing in one of her pictures. So I went ahead and I kind of just went with that. So this is uh, this is all just in pencil right here. I even left the original blues there. Some people like that. So that That's getting it awesome. started. That's cute. Yeah. That's fantastic. And. Uh, I look so much. Honestly, I'm not a fan of putting hands in pockets for any reason at all. I really like to show hands, but I wanted to keep it at just above the waist. So instead of putting your hand floating on a ghost tip, I, I went ahead and I put your hand in your pocket there. So I hope you're not too disappointed in that. You can live with them. That's cute. Let's see Quentin's. Adorable. And Quinn's, I never even got the chance to get around to it. I intend to, though. I love, I think it's the same jacket he's wearing today. It's got those pinstripes on it. You know what? If you if you hold it on an angle, Chris, yeah. we can see it better yeah. than flat. Try that. Yeah, that's better. That's oh, we're in action mode. What's that? You're in action mode. You're action, Quentin. I know. I love it. It's brilliant. Uh, Quentin, Quentin, can we see that pose? The glasses down. Yes. Sign up. <laughs> yes. My Wait, my hair is. Quentin a playing the guitar while we were talking. No, no, no. I was I was holding on to it. That's Wait, not cute. There you go. Imagine that time you were going on to your Beatles set, just like that. So show, show the one of Megan at an angle, too, if you would, because the yeah, other one's a weird that one. Uh, Look uh, at those eyes. I love it. Me yeah. uh, now, how much are those going for? Those are a starting bid of 90. 90 each? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. And guys, just to remind everyone out there, if you would like to buy an autographed photo of Quentin or Megan of either of them or their characters or um, a, an experience with one of them that is on happyspacepopcon.com. What are you laughing about, Keith? I'm laughing at Quentin. What do you think I'm <laughs> laughing at? Quentin <laughs> down there. I was going, what did I do now? <laughs> okay, guys, get those bids in. Get those bids in. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Uh, well, I'll send this on the chat. Um, so Quentin, pick. Where'd you go? Did he freeze? He's just being adorable. He's just I'm being, just being adorable. <laughs> being a guitar. He might be getting a guitar. Uh, <laughs> that would be really cool. 
Yes, he did get a guitar. A little interstitial music, that's all. Because, you know, it's like being around a campfire. I'm a little, little, I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spell. <laughs> when I get all tired. Uh, what is it? Megan, help me, babe. Steamed up. When I get all steamed, steamed up. Pour me out. And I shout. And, and I shout. Tip me over. Tip me over and pour me out. Pour me out. Tip me over and pour me out. We're a little teapot, sure and stout. This is me bloody handle. This is me bloody snout. <laughs> when I get all tired, I scream and shout. Get off my back and let me out. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh. Um, you know who can't do that? Chris Evans. Goddamn right. <laughs> See Chris Evans do that. This is what I say to Chris Evans right here. Chris Evans, smackdown. For, for all my English fans and Irish fans and family and Welsh. Oh, yes. Scottish. Oh. Chris Evans, you'll always be number two. Oh my God. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah, baby. Thank you. You lead right into my next question. Quentin Flynn? Yes. Who does number two work for? Who does number two work for? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's, right, buddy. That's right, buddy. You tell him. You tell him, buddy. <laughs> Can we get a courtesy flush over there, fella? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very favorite scene from Austin Powers. Fantastic. Fantastic. I did did actually. I'm just going to keep segueing. I happened to play Austin Powers in a commercial for Neighbor Care Pharmacy. How did you not tell me that? I forgot about it till this very moment. And uh, you, you know, act it out. Act it out. Let's see it. Well, you know, it was a little bit. Hey, you know, we come in. I come into the uh, pharmacy and I ask silly things like. Have you got any candy, man? Have you got any cigarettes? Have you got any lighters? And he said, we're a pharmacy. Uh, we have medicine. What? That's terrible. And I had a couple of models with me, and one picked up a, a, a cane. Not a cane. A, um, when you walk on those things underneath your arms, they're crutches. And she was playing it like a guitar. And I said, oh, behave. And she went, oh, don't you have any panties? Or something ridiculous. And uh, they didn't have it. And so then we all had to walk out, but I had to dance out. Yeah. Uh, and it was about neighbor care, handling families. And it was fantastic. We shot it back east in Maryland. Um, and then the follow up on that is I was doing a show called the um, uh, Poptopia, which is a musical festival here in Los Angeles. Several bands were playing for several days. And I was with my drummer and guitarist from my band, Slow Motorcade. And we saw Mike Myers walk into the club. And it was the uh, Martini Lounge. And the brothers Walsh said to me, they insisted I go speak to Mike Myers. And I said, why? I'm like, well, because you and him, and we just need to see you two in the same space. Oh my God. I said, okay. So I went up to Mike and I, I said, hello. And I welcomed him warmly and we chatted about music and we chatted about improv. And then I said, ha. Huh, I got to tell you, I love your Austin Powers character. And, you know, I paid homage to you through this commercial for Neighbor Care as Austin Powers. Oh, fantastic. And he looked at me and he went, oh, oh, really? Okay. And I said, oh, are you, do you, you want to hang out? Well, no, I'm going over there by the bar. It's good to meet you. Good to see you. So a few weeks later. I get a call from my agent and they go, oh my God, you're not going to believe this. But United Artists put a cease and desist on your neighbor care commercial. Oh, oh no. I said, but I wonder, are you sure? Paramount, one of the two. I said, how'd that happen? That's weird. Oh. 
I wonder how that happened. Yeah. I wonder. Uh, you know, I that, go ahead. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I worked on the uh, Beautiful Stranger music video. So I worked with Madonna and Mike Myers on that one. Wow. And Vern Trevor and, and the little hairless, uh, you know. Oh, Vern Troyer. Yeah, Vern Troyer, yeah. I and, have a Vern uh, Troyer story. Mm. Yeah. But that was, that was an experience because Mike Myers, you know, it was a great experience. So I'm not saying anything bad about Mike, but we couldn't get him to eat anything but hot dogs. He was like, the whole <laughs> shoot is just hot dogs, nothing else. And Madonna was always like ordering food out from like local restaurants and wow, send out. And, but he, he only wanted hot dogs. Yes. Well, it just goes to show <laughs> how mentally ill he is. And God bless him. <laughs> we, had a, we had a good time. No, he's, he's a I nice tried a little. We had like a golf cart painted like um, a mini and we were like driving all over the universal lot. So we, we had a good time. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I know I did a convention. Vern Troyer and I sat next to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is a little guy, as you remember from the movies. And the next day I came back uh, and he got there before I did. And he took my table. And all I could think of was you, Vern Troyer. <laughs> And then he died. So I don't know. I think I got a lot of power over getting commercials watch your knocked, path, off, knocked off the air and, you know, people passing away. I don't know. I, you got to watch that. Watch I know. You point that finger. I know. It hasn't worked with Chris Evans yet. But uh, <laughs> Chris someday, Evans, watch out. <laughs> someday. He seems to get power off of what I do. God bless for Yeah, he, he, was a, he was a nice man. I, he I was, well, he was wonderful. Except for one day. Yeah. He was he ever in the, I wonder if he was ever in the stage show Little Women. Yeah. <laughs> and and what, a, what a lovely segue, Quentin. Were you yeah. ever in the stage show Little Women? Secretly. Secretly? Yeah. No, the answer is no. I hate using, I, you know, improv's all about yes and, I. Right? Oh, yeah, I gotta yeah. be honest, I, I was not. But I was in Oklahoma. I played Ali Hakim, the peddler man. I was in uh, uh, Guys and Dolls. I played Nathan Detroit, of course. And uh, For another role you took from Nathan Lane? I, 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 well, I did. I stole that from Nathan. Oh, um, and I did see Nathan in a, a show in New York called The Front Page, which had a limited wow. run and uh, on my birthday a few years ago. And uh, he was wonderful. What a powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, John Goodman was in it as well, and a few other actors. Uh, the, and, and Robert Morse was in it. So if you can imagine seeing Robert Morse, who was the, the crit critic's darling of Broadway in the 60s, and then Nathan Lane, who was the critic's darling of Broadway in the 90s, together on stage in Manhattan, my mind was blown. That's so good. That is so cool. Guys, um, let's check in with Chris one more time or another time. I can't hear. Well, you. why don't we? Time. Yeah. So, folks, people are asking about the bidding process. Um, if you're having any trouble, if you go to Facebook, to the Fayetteville Comic Con Facebook page, um, Firefox works best if you want to place a bid. Um, so or just good. Or you can go to the F, the Fayetteville Comic Con homepage or Fayetteville Comic Con Facebook page. Is that correct, Keith? That is correct. The uh, feed that is streaming is, seems to be uh, interacting a little bit with Internet Explorer in a bad way. But Chrome and Firefox and Safari, I just tested out, all are allowing that link. But the best place to chat is the Facebook page for Fayetteville Comic Con. Yeah, so we are up to $200 on the sketch right now, guys. This is a steal for an 11 by 17 original sketch by Chris. And Renee, we are actually now at 250. I put a picture of the sketch Chris was doing out on my personal Facebook page. Yeah. Look at all the beautiful colors I'll get to use. Woo! 50. Hi, hi, hi. Before you start on that, why don't you show the caricatures of uh, Quentin and Megan again at an angle so that right. the audience can see and them? I, I got to angle them right, so that it picks it up. So here is Quentin right there rocking some sunglasses and that really cool jacket. There we go. And then yeah, these yeah, are right. uncomfortable. 
And we're going to have to wait the for blue, uh, blue uh, pencil uh, underneath. Yeah. And then there is our lovely Megan, also rocking her leather jacket. Yay! Yeah, babe. Very cool. Can you get that pose as well, Megan? The yeah. Hey. There you go. There you nice. go. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. So guys, <laughs> do get your bids in. Chris is going to start working on the color now. We don't have too much longer in our show today. Just a, about, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes, 16 minutes. And it, uh, when we have about five minutes left, we are going to have a drawing for a free print. So, yeah, one of the viewers is going to win a free print so, by Chris with a little remark on it. Yeah, we, uh, should, uh, we should also, uh, I don't know if we touched upon this, Drake says he can't get on the website. He bought merchandise from Quentin, but yeah. can, cannot bid. Um, he has to bid on the live stream. Um, I think he was trying to go back to the website to place a bid. So... Oh. If he, if he gets on Facebook or he can send me a, an e a text message real quick. Um, cool. I don't, I'm giving out. Well, I, I'll give you my email address. It's Eva Inc. at AOL.com. E-V-A-I-N-K at AOL.com. If you can't bid any other way, send me your bid to my email and I'll check it before we close things out. Check it before you wreck it. Yeah. And and Megan, could I circle back to Quinn for something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, you, you mentioned up. well, you you mentioned uh, going off to do the bird cage. Some other actors you came in behind them, which is an amazing film. And Robin Williams from one of his early stand-ups an album i had on on vinyl comedy album i think i had on vinyl as a kid was him doing elmer fudd which you Quinn, are also known for elmer fudd from this robot chicken yes and i was wondering if you remember uh robin williams as elmer fudd doing uh you know i'm driving in my god uh, oh yeah bruce sting bruce springsteen bruce springsteen fire. oh that was so funny yeah you turn on the radio you pull me close. I say no. That's right. He did that. He goes, you say you a kiss, but you say I'm a wire. <laughs> oh, yeah. When we kiss, fire. That, that's what his, yeah, his deal was. Oh, I'm having a great fanboy moment. <laughs> that's good stuff, man. Aww. And I, similarly, uh, I, instead of doing a, a rock and roll tune, I did a, a rap song. Uh, we did a parody of Eminem's Eight Mile on Robot Chicken. And Seth Green, the creator and director, came in because he, he fancies himself a rapper and he is quite good. So he directed me rapping as Elmer Fudd in the booth with me. And so, you know, I said, oh, oh, I'll get you, rabbit. Uh, you're sexually confused because you were cross dresser. Um, something like that. And call me the professor. I wish I had the lyrics in front of me. I could do it. But that's some of it. You can look it up online on YouTube. And um, Battle rapping with Seth Green. As yeah, Seth Green directing me rapping as Elmer Fudd. Awesome. Uh, bizarre. <laughs> and then I, I did... <laughs> A number of episodes where I also was on the same one with, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Christopher uh, Lloyd. Oh. Um, yeah, we were on the same episode. And he, of course, played um, Doc Brown in Back to the Future. Marty, oh, we've got to find the DeLorean. You'll never know what happens with your mother. <laughs> and he is a character. Uh, I, I was doing a convention with him. And I had done a, a panel in which we were doing a lot of impressions. And uh, while Christopher Walken is a fan favorite, my Christopher Lloyd went over like gangbusters. And suddenly I'm taking a moment out in the green room and there's Chris and his handler and I'm with my handler. His handler or liaison saw the show. His favorite was my Christopher Lloyd impression. But I was so nervous in front of Christopher Lloyd, I started to clam up and he said, Quinn, I loved what you did. Which was your favorite impression that you did? And I said, it, well, it had to have been Christopher Walken. 
And Christopher Lloyd then said, you know, I worked with Chris in New York. On Broadway, we did Hamlet. And the thing about Chris is he liked to take his time. <laughs> I said, I, I know another guy who does too. Our break's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. and so that segues into a question we have online to Megan and Quentin, which is what roles would you like to play that you haven't played, Megan? Well, you know, you're talking about Shakespeare. I always 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 wanted to play uh beatrice and much ado much ado about nothing yeah one day one day i don't think i'm too old yet no and that's a good character now it also says or a person that you wanted to play let's just say that there was maybe a, a, a Ooh. biopic Ooh. there a well i don't person. know i can think about that you go you go you go okay well, uh, is there a character I'd like to play? Yeah, I, well, I, you know, the thing is, Gene Wilder is so influential on me. I would do, I would love to do anything Gene has done, but it would be hard to do it without doing Gene. Um, doing something Wonka-esque would be incredibly fun. Uh -huh. uh, I have been I have, Gene Wilder biopic? I would do, that would be brilliant. If, I don't know. I, yeah, I would. They'd have to do it soon, though, uh, just You're because. Same for that. You know. awesome. then, then again, with CGI, they could make me look a bit younger. But I would love to do a Wilder biopic, yes, um, and maybe um, a McCartney, because I've done Paul in a couple of movies. You know, that's the thing. I'd love to do maybe a Paul McCartney thing. Started writing the one man show, but you know, not now because of the heat. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that's the name of it called Because of the Heat. <laughs> uh, I think your one-man show called Because of the Heat might be like a page long. You think? <laughs> I can't do anything. I can't finish sentences. No, that's a page turner. Um, <laughs> in I'm the heat of the night. Yeah, I'd be doing Carol O'Connor on Broadway. Um, Let's see, Quentin, are you coming back for the Kingdom Hearts show they just announced on Disney Plus, Hunter? Hunter, I, from your lips to God's ears, let's hope so. Yes. I don't know. I don't know, I want to. Oh, show. I did not even hear that. I didn't either. Well, that's not true, I heard, I heard rumblings about it. They're doing an animated series. That'd be um, so cool. Right? Yeah. Um, it would be nice. Disney Plus Kingdom Hearts. They just announced it, Hunter. Give us more information, Hunter. We're here. Hunter's in the show. Hunter, write to Disney Plus. Tell them. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Maybe a two-person show with Megan and Quinn. Well, you have mentioned so many of my favorite people, Gene Wilder, Paul McCartney. I mean, you're like touching everything I love. I mean, Aww. and your voices are just so amazing. Thank you. You have to do a show, a one-man uh, show. All right. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You really should. Yeah. yeah. I just need to find a, a couple of right. humor too. I, I, I'll be there. I'll be there. And uh, let's, talk, let's talk about another hero of yours and mine, Quentin. Oh, pointy birds. Oh, pointy, oh, pointy. Pointy birds. Oh, pointy, pointy. Anoint. Anointy, anointy. Anointy. Steve Martin, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Martin, man with two brains. Grandpa. I don't know that one. Grandpa bought a rubber. <laughs> That's from uh, one of his live albums. Oh, genius. So I ran into, I literally ran into Steve Martin on the street in New York. Like I, I was running late for something and I bumped into him coming around a corner. Oh. And I missed the opportunity to say, well, excuse me. 
<laughs> oh, that would have been brilliant. <laughs> I regret that moment. Oh. oh what did you say? Yeah. Uh, uh, but, oh, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> and did he say sorry? I don't remember. I was so surprised and starstruck all at once. Like, right. one you people on the planet that I was excited to have a celebrity spy spotting of. Yeah. That I was just dumb. Dumbfounded, sure. Yeah. I, I, the, I, I've not had that. The only on the street thing that happened to me is going up Fairfax with my friend, Michael DeVorzen. And he saw that Andrew Dice Clay was up ahead and he was a big fan of his from the 90s and wanted his autograph. I said, fine, I'll, I'll go, I will introduce you. He said, do you know him? I said, no, but it doesn't matter. Well, on, on our way to running, suddenly to my left, coming the opposite way on the sidewalk, I, I see someone, this guy and this gal, and I, I recognize this guy. And our eyes lock and he sees me and we both have that acknowledgement. I'm like, hey, he's like, hey. And in my head, I'm like, who is that? It's Fred. Yeah, it's Fred Armisen. Wait, wait, do I know Fred Armisen? He, th he seems to know me. Do I know him? And we both did the hat. You, uh, I'm like, how's it going? He's like, good. I'm like, well, yeah, okay, bye. And then I just kept running. And I thought, same as you. I had the opportunity to actually have a conversation with the wonderful Fred Armisen. And instead, I'm running off to help my friend get an autograph from him. The dice man, who is eh, pleasant enough, but not nearly as pleasant as Fred. Guys, I'm going to interrupt. For so, a just Renee, Renee, real quick before you go, that just so Quentin, uh, the company Square Video Game apparently is going to be in charge of production for the Kingdom Hearts uh, oh. series. It will be CG animated rather than live action. So, there you go. And Square Enix also apparently does because I just clicked on this page and to the right, they just released a patch for their Marvel video game. Mm. And the picture is Chris Evans as Captain America. <laughs> Damn it. No. To us. Oh, no. You are messing with me. Nerds. <laughs> you better be messing with me. Oh, gosh. I wish, yeah, I'm going to get stuff here one more time, guys. Let's uh, go over Chris. How's it going with the color? Oh, I'm glad to be coloring now. So uh, just starting on Megan's nice. Nerd Story there, right? And uh, went ahead and I wanted to test the right yellow because Cone's yellow is, it's not like quite a true yellow. So I was trying to find this. Um, it's actually a urine yellow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said it on me. <laughs> yeah. We're on the same page, Chris. You know that. Is that a um, someone asked earlier, right? So just to shout it out, I guess, the, the markers that I'm using, because I guess people, they care about this. I just care about coloring. But they're they're called a chameleon marker is what, what I use right now. So they're they're just like these refillable markers that are similar to like Prisma and, and uh, everything else that you can get, I guess. But I'm using chameleon today. So guys, of course, Chris is not going to be able to finish all the coloring on this because we're almost out of time. But if you go to um, the Happy Space uh, PopCon site on Facebook, I will post the finished piece when it's done. Um, our bid on this is up to 250. So unless we get another bid in, the, in a few minutes, that is going to be the going rate. But guys, if you want to order your own sketch from Chris, whether you would like something like this, or if you'd like something else, just contact me at evainc at aol.com or through the happyspacepopcon.com website or through our web, um, our Facebook page. And uh, you can order your own commission from Chris. But right now, real quick, we are going to draw the winner of the free print. And we will contact the winner via email. You can choose from any print that Chris has on the Happy Space PopCon website. So you just have to go in there and pick out which one you want, and he'll do a little drawing on there for you as well. All right. Good luck, everybody. You guys see your mojo. No, it's so exciting. All right, guys, we have the winner. And the winner of the free Chris Coates print with the drawing is 
Chad Boynton. Chad Boynton. B-U-T-O-N. So, Chad, we will reach out to you. Congratulations. All right. Yay. Yeah, well, thank you for being a part of this. All right. Thank you guys for being part of Happy Space PopCon this last, these last two months. We're going to have new shows coming. A lot of our friends are going to come back. And we want to thank Quentin and Megan again for uh, keeping us with our little celebration here. And it's oh, been what a fun. pleasure. Say, Renee, so, is, uh, will, this, be, will this, this episode here be posted on YouTube or... Uh, yeah, Keith is going to handle the um, audio visual part and we'll have it on YouTube. We're going to have it on Fayetteville Live and we'll be posting those links as well. Fantastic. And oh, we did just get a $200 bid for Megan Sketch by Chris. Wow. Oh. Woo. Yeah. Very so cool. Discount that comment that I gave back, David. What? I just, never mind. That All was right. an issue with glasses. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's been so much fun. So I'm going to hand it back over to um, our our reporter Megan there and Quentin, and then you guys take it away. Take it away, Megan. Well, Quentin Flynn, this has been such a pleasure. Um, I hope I can have you back on the show sometime. You can have me anytime you want. Ba dum bum ba dum bum. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Space Popcon. Mwah. Thank Wait, you. is it? Oh, wow, it's over already. Damn. It is. Thank you, everybody. Quinn, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Chris.